So let's talk about currents and measuring currents. Right, so what was the total membrane current composed of that Hodgkin Huxley had to analyze? Right, I membrane is equal to. It's a little smaller. So we have the capacitance. Right. Plus the current due to leak. Right. Plus the um, voltage active, voltage dependent potassium channel. Correct. And the voltage dependent sodium channels. Right. Now, of course, having four currents at once to deal with is pretty overwhelming. That's a lot to work with. Right. Yeah. So, how would you get rid of them? What do you do to try to take this into pieces? Well, you said that if we use choline, which is something like sodium but wouldn't fit through the channel, it's got the same charge but it's too large to fit. Right. That we can sort of cross that out for now. That's right. And there are nowadays modern a modern experiment you use something like tetrodotoxin TTX to block it. But it's the same idea. Mm -hmm. Good. So now we have three currents, but that's still a lot. Well, our potassium current is voltage dependent. Uh-huh. So maybe if we used our voltage clamp and clamped the voltage, we could just isolate sort of these two. What would make what would be voltage steps that would turn them on and not turn on the potassium? Well, the potassium current is turned on by an action potential which depolarizes. So if we hyperpolarize with our voltage clamp, that should not activate our potassium. Excellent. Okay, so? So let's draw this. So here is our voltage. Which is in? Millivolts. Okay. And, um, and where are we at rest? We'll say negative 60. Sounds good. Um, and then let's step down to negative 65, maybe? No volts, sure. Okay. This line is actually useless. So, we start at negative 60. We're, we're happy and at rest. And then we're going to step down to 65. Mm -hmm. And step back up. Right, and those are perfectly sharp those steps. Those are perfectly straight. Okay, got it. And we're going to look at how current... Right, you're in voltage clamp, so the thing that you measure is... Is your current, is because your current you're changes. controlling your voltage. That's right, and measuring your current. So here's our current. And if you were at rest to begin with, that's usually nanoamps or micro microamps per centimeter squared. It depends on what you're doing. But if you're really at rest, what should the current value be if you're at the resting potential? If we're at the resting potential, which we're assuming we are, it should be zero. Oh. Because nothing is... The net movement of charge is zero. Zero. But all that hard work we did on the resting potential. We know that the current has to be at net zero. All right, mm -hmm. now we step hyperpolarizing and what happens? So let's look at this, the membrane okay. for figuring this out. Right. I'm going to put the start. charges, lots of room to put the charges right next to the membrane, don't we? Yep. Okay, so we start with our membrane with its negative on the inside, positive on the outside. Uh -huh. And then what we're doing is we're adding more negative charges. That's right, we're hyperpolarizing. We're stepping so. the voltage down. All right, so it's so, more negative. And so what this should do, so we think a about it. So they're balancing positive charges with those negative charges, right? Yeah. On the membrane. Good. And now, so, what, what should the membrane do? Due to this, the sort of balancing of charges, we have an initial sort of super flux of, or of positive charges into the cell. Right, which will be carried by? Potassium. Which is higher outside? Sodium. Right. So which should, should have carried by sodium. Probably. That would make a lot of sense. So we have initial. Could be potassium ions. I'm not ruling that out. More likely sodium. Channels, but it's, yeah, that's, okay. So this initial sort of capacitance, just the adding of these charges, right. causes a causes a large sort of spike. That's right, right in the current through the capacitor. Mm -hmm. Right, we saw that when you added the minus charges, suddenly you pushed off a minus charge that was there and left behind the positive charge. Right? Yeah, that's effectively so. That's your very fast potass uh, capacitive current. But and then more slowly, slightly more slowly, you develop a steady, completely steady a uh, leak current. Right, and and it's inward, which means what kind of charges are you bringing in? We're bringing in positive charges. That's right. And this is because we're holding this, so we're sort of adding more negative charges that's right. that our positive charges need to counteract. That, that's right. 
And so we have a, this is a straight line again. Right. A steady sort of leak. And then when we go back. And then when we turn this off, I will get rid of all of our added charges. Mm -hmm. And this is again going to create a capacitance sort of change. Mm -hmm. And so there's going to be initial jump outward. Mm -hmm. um, to do the capacitance. Right, you're so discharging the capacitor, so you get that initial yeah. very, very fast jump. And then, if you bump back to rest, what's your net current at that point? Here. Zero. Cool. Okay, so it makes sense in terms of thinking of our membrane. That's right. Which is important. Right. Good, now if I were going to, so there's a time course separation here, so I can fit and solve for IC just by measuring that initial very fast thing before the leak is established. Now I want to solve for the leak. Um, I need an equation that allows me to go from the information I have here, which is uh, current that I'm measuring, mm -hmm. voltage that I'm measuring, and I need conductance. So that says that I leak is equal to, what's our famous equation for this? We've got our G leak mm -hmm. times our driving force. Which is Vm minus B e leak. Good. And now I want to solve for G leak. So let's do that. A simple algebra. And divide by the sum of sides. That's right. Assuming you're not at Vm is not at E leak. That's not zero. So you can divide by it and you end up with I leak, I leak. divided by Vm minus E leak. Excellent. So now you can, and now what does that look like if you did a plot of current versus voltage, of actually voltage versus current. So on your x-axis is voltage, on your y-axis is current. Where's your zero point? Well, zero is when you're at mm -hmm. rest. Yeah, so why don't you mark that on the b-axis. I'm going to mark it over. Oh, well, if it's here. minus 60, you put it over there if you like. Yeah, yeah minus 60. And that's where it's at zero. And, and now it just linearly increases exactly, or decreases if you're on the other side. And so you can set up the slope, and that means now uh, you can subtract out, if you got the voltage clamp data, either both the leak and the capacitive current. And that means that back to our original equation, we could now start to focus just on I potassium, and that will be our next exciting episode. Mm -hmm.